morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Environmental Social Justice. Today, it is just us, but we are interviewing Miss Joy Langford, who is with the Water Replenishment Board. So welcome, Joy. Hi. It's, it's, a bit, it's just as if everyone doesn't already know me from uh, ESJ, but yes, yeah, you've been, we're going to talk, <laughs> talk about uh, some of the stuff that I'm doing at uh, Water Replenishment District, what um, some of the issues are that are going on in the water space right now um, and how it drastically uh, relates to climate change uh, as well as heat waves. So yes. all of the things that we hope are not going to converge together this year and create a, a catastrophe. You know, I'm glad you used the word morning. Good, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hell have no fury like a drought, but um, no, I mean, seriously, in all honesty, I have said this a million times, and I think we're finally to the point where people may take me seriously, is if we can build an oil pipeline from Canada to Texas, we should be able to build a water pipeline from the Midwest, which is continuously flooding, to the Colorado River, river which is depl uh, depleted in their resources. I know there's no money in it. I know it's hard, but we, are, we have reached that point. And Joy, the work you're doing in trying to conserve our water, replenish our water, and fight drought Am I crazy or is this, you know, something maybe to be discussed? Oh, it's definitely something that needs to be discussed. So, you know, one of the, the, the comfy features of this, if you're living in the uh, LA basin, uh, is that 90% uh, we have enough water in our aquifers and in our storage facilities uh, to create or to, to uh, supply us uh, for quite some while. Uh, some while. Um, Ninety percent of our water here uh, in this particular basin, uh, where a water replenishment district is, uh, we are able to self-supply uh, through replenishments of our aquifers um, and making sure that we're cleaning water. Um, groundwater is cleaned, which you know, is sometimes brackish, uh, meaning that it's got other elements to it as well. We have, we do a very good job uh, of cleaning that water, making sure that it's safe uh, for drinking. There's also desalination process, uh, which well, is taking the ocean, yeah, taking the ocean water, which look, it's, that's a costly proposition um, as well, but, you know, it beats some of the alternatives uh, some of the time, which, well, for it's the not, LA basin would be kind of drawing water from the Sacramento area, bring it yeah, all the way down. Uh, we're finding place locally, we're able to mitigate a lot of those costs or needs here well, in thing, Southern California. The thing, real quick, let, let me just go back to desal. So the issue primarily with desalinization, I mean, cost is there of course, but it's that super saturated salt water that gets dumped back in the ocean. That right back in the ocean. And if that messes with the ecosystem. Water. Yeah. 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 So that's that's one of the biggest issues. And when you talked about keeping the water clean, it's contaminated. I mean, it's not just salt water that's contaminated. There's going to be petroleum and, and um, chlorinated solvents in that water. And yes, that does get filtered out. We have the technology. But it's a shame that we have kind of poisoned our own water. The one thing we kind of need. That you have to clean the water to the, the what could have been clean water now needs to be cleaned in order to give it back to uh, the people and the environment and uh, you know every aspect of it as far as you know making sure water is not only potable but making sure that reclaimed water can be used uh, which is heavily used like in uh, the Long Beach area. Uh, to sustain plants and um, just keep operations going. So there's there's a lot to it. Water transportation is really the conversation of now and of the future, uh, which is one of the things that we're responsible for, making sure water infrastructure as well as water transportation, um, how, how we efficiently transport water um, from various areas and more specifically clean water in, uh, to people's homes and businesses as well. So it's, it's, it's a task. Um, it's a task that's <laughs> compounded right now. Um, and it's just because over the last couple of weeks, I've been, you know, 
having lots of conversations with people at different uh, different water pumpers, um, various entities uh, as to what the drought really means, uh, what climate change, as well as what um, you know the heat waves will mean to our water um, if this just happens to be one of the years you know, fingers, fingers crossed that we do run across, you know, a heat wave um, oh, yeah, we that we don't. Yeah. So every year with fire, fires and droughts and things like that, we're always on bated breath. But even now, more so with uh, the drought levels, the way they are, uh, it's creating a, a significant uh, problem. So I just wanted to touch on a couple of things um, going back to the beginning of your statement. Um, when people, just so the public knows, when you talk about potable or potable water, it means drinkable water, water that you can drink. Yes. Um, and when we talk about reclamation, reclamation is primarily when you take your wastewater from your bathtub, your dishwasher, and you use it in your garden for agriculture. It's a great idea. And a lot of people should, if you can't afford to, refurbish your house to do that. And the heat waves, we are going to have massive heat waves, huge. This is this yeah. is the reality of our future um, the Rockefeller Center and the Adrian Arsh um, Center is heavily working on, on heat and extreme heat. And it'll not just affect our drought, our lack of water, but also human health. So, Joy, oh, you've, yeah. got, you've got a huge task ahead of you. I, um, yeah. It's, it's not going to be easy. What you have been assigned to do is not easy. And the area that I've been assigned to, um, we've got most, most of my area is South L.A., um, where we need to have uh, extended conversations regarding uh, water independence now for lower income communities, uh, disadvantaged communities. Sorry, my phone just stopped ringing. Uh, disadvantaged communities really um, explaining um, to the younger generations, uh, the importance of water, the importance of water conservation, uh, the importance of obviously clean water, and um, the 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 water bills, uh, which are actually going up. So uh, about two weeks ago, uh, one of the major um, pumpers, uh, Metropolitan Water District they um, announced that there's gonna be a 5% uh, rate increase uh, over the next year. And then potentially there's gonna be another 8% increase in 2023. Oh, so yeah. the bills are moving up exorbitantly too. And just really trying to think internally, being the thinker and the economist that I am, how do we support uh, disadvantaged communities that are even just trying to keep their rate, their other lights and utilities um, on at the same time when everything is just out of the roof with inflation uh, and oh. everything else. Something's got to give, but again, people need water. So Can I just jump in real quick? Thing. We have a question from uh, LinkedIn, Sharon Sand on LinkedIn. Wants to know what your thoughts are on building the sites reservoir when most of our reservoirs and aquifers are very low. Yeah, it, it's 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 a question that kind of goes along city by city. Um, there are still several cities uh, in my uh, immediate area that are uh, looking to build wells uh, so that they can get off of the large pumpers uh, meters, mm -hmm. um, and that's actually a, a, a it can be a good idea. Usually cities need uh, funding in order to be able to do that, or they need short-term loans. Uh, we have been working um, at my agency to make sure some of those happen. Um, just having conversations with various city managers, various mayors, uh, and we've done a great job of opening up well. So uh, that that's definitely a way to kind of get around that. We also, Sharon also just typed in I love the fact when people communicate with us. I really do. And what do you think of tiered pricing on water? Because there's tier one, tier two, and I believe a tier three. Keeping necessary water levels affordable, but increasing the higher tiers more dramatically. So I guess what that means is water wasters, people who use an excessive amount of water, will pop up to that tier two, which is a much more higher, which is a much higher rate that you're charged. Well, they're doing that already in um, 
in my particular area um, with the water company that I actually use as well. Uh, and I think there needs to be more education around that. So if, for example, um, I had an issue with a, a building uh, last week, I got a water bill and I did not even have a tenant in one of the units and the water bill had doubled. So I called the water company out, which this is a good lesson for anybody that, you know, is learning the, the process of how you deal with your water utility. Uh, I called them, they sent someone out. The guy came and read the meter with his electronic stuff in five minutes. He told me that the water uh, had been increasing from the previous month uh, to 20 gallons a day, which was quite a lot per unit. He gave me these little water blue pellets. We put them in the toilets. We found yep. out one of the toilets is, was, was leaking. Um, so that actually drew the bill up about uh, $150 um, for that particular building. So I think more needs to um, be placed in the hands of uh, the property owners or whoever is in charge of the water bill. Yeah. Uh, letting us know how to take control of uh, the situation. If a water bill looks high, uh, what can we do? Call your water company for a free assessment. They'll send somebody out on an appointment to come and check your water meter and see what could be leaking. So before we go to something um, more dramatic, so to say, like Sharon is speaking of, you know, about tier pricing, I think we really need to spend you know, a little bit of time here trying to make sure uh, that the education is out there. Um, you know, people just become, people just, people just, you know, take a bill for what it's worth and say, okay, I have to pay it or else. We need to really start empowering people to really understand what all of their utilities are, what they mean, how they can save and how they can serve and how that will ultimately help the environment. Um, right. But tier pricing is definitely something that we need to look at as well. I think a lot of this is gonna come down to the messaging because all we're told right now is don't water your lawn, change your landscaping, shorter showers, that's it. Like we're not, you know, and this is kind of gonna be something you're gonna to have to have fun with is to tell people, no, okay, yes, this is a part. It's not just the be all end all. Um, but I do have a quick question for you. So I want to get back to the whole billing side real quick. Cause you're talking about water bills are going up. What justifies the increase in the water bills, like to raise the rates? Well, the fact that there is less water and, and this is where it gets kind of complicated, right? So there's, uh, less water due to a drought. Um, it's still enough water for us to be able, uh, to use, but the price of the water goes up. Then at the same time, you have fixed costs associated with water. Lots of right. wonderful engineers, what lots of you know um, infrastructure that's in place that has to stay the same. You know, people still need to be paid whether you pump two gallons of water or uh, twenty acre feet worth of water. Um, so trying to balance that. Um, at a higher level with uh, the manager and everyone else at these various water companies, that's where the challenge comes in because you still have the fixed costs. Really, in reality, you still need to be able to pump um, a significant amount of water, you know, pre-drought amounts of water. But yet at the same time, um, those have to be decreased, but the fixed costs still have to stay the same. So that kind of creates the increase in the cost think, of the water. I think you know where I'm going with this is that we talked a lot about the power company and how it, the bills kept going up and up and up and up and the infrastructure kept, kept getting worse and worse and worse. Right. So I wanted to, so that's kind of what the point of that question was is like are we just paying to get nothing except a further problem? Well, there deal. is water, there is money um, in infrastructure. So uh, there's money coming down um, from the federal government, even um, with uh, the infrastructure uh, plan. Uh, states uh, allocate the state water board here in California, uh, allocates certain amount of money to build more wells, right. to make sure that water piping is good, that 
you know, uh, well, the water is safe and sound. So it really is kind of like the exact opposite of what happened with the power company, which is that like the money is actually going to keep the system functioning and get improvements versus just maintain the status quo, let it fall apart, and then we get fires everywhere that we have to deal with. Right. A bit so of an extreme really like view. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it, it, but, but that is what we've talked about a lot on the show is that you know, yeah i mean the electric companies are actively yeah. trying to fix their infrastructure but it's but we, but what i'm saying is we spent there's been a ton of money spent to keep those systems up and running versus so now we're kind of paying for and we've talked about you know, one of the running themes of the show it's always been we pay for our past mistakes and yeah. when we start talking about like the power grid and we know it's aging we know it's it's you know, it's caused massive issues because it wasn't maintained properly. Yeah. So we paid for it. Um, we paid for it at the time to be maintained, but now we're paying for it because it's not, it wasn't actually maintained properly, we find out. So I just, that was my question about the water is that like, you know, are we actually maintaining it and improving it as it goes forward so we don't get those same problems? May I oh, add? Oh, we absolutely Joy, are. before you answer, because um, I'm going to add to that. So I mean, you're going to have two questions to answer. Um, I did a tour of the Laverne uh, water treatment facility, beautiful place. And I learned that there is an invasive species now in the um, either Lake Mead or Colorado River, and it's these little zebra mussels. So that's an added cost because they now have to scrape those off of everything. They're clogging the pipes, they're clogging the infiltration. It's a mess. So just adding to Joel's infrastructure, we now have an invasive species issue. Yeah, oh, look, there's lots of issues as it relates to water, as I am, <laughs> you know, issues. continually, continually learning. Like, I thought I knew a lot as an environmentalist on, you know, water issues, you know, Heal the Bay, working with uh, the Coastal Commission at times. But, you know, when you really see the work that uh, goes into uh, not only water policy, but just to make sure that various areas or all areas are have clean uh, water. It's yeah, it's a it's a yeah. lofty task, and there are so many wonderful. One of the things that I can say is that I've met so many cool water professionals that just really know their stuff. Whether they're engineers, whether they're yeah, so. It takes more than a village uh, in water to make sure that we have clean water. And that's really what's so motivating to me in this whole process. So, so how do you see this going forward? Because we also have a huge shortage of housing. So there's a ton of housing coming in, which is going to be more water, whether it's the actual construction, the infrastructure, and then the, once people live there. How do you foresee that going when it comes to our water issues? I have, and that's, yeah, that's a, a, a real lofty question right there because Enjoy who knows, too. the wa water definitely needs to, you know, yeah. uh, be pumped into new neighborhoods. We definitely need, you know, the new housing. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a matter of, and look, there'll be special districts in every new area uh, that will be in control of the water. Hopefully there'll be some seasoned water professionals that are willing to jump in, you know, for the task of making sure that that particular area uh, has clean water. But there, there are a lot of different layers to it, with whether it's uh, the Water Resources Board at the state um, on down that makes sure that all, you know, water is, is clean, potable, that everybody can, you know, uh, get water independence, can uh, disadvantage communities, uh, can garner even cleaner water. Uh, so there, there's a lot of, of, of different ways that it, it's tackled. And I'm sure with new homes, um, it's also yeah. tackled that way through Melarus and different other. Uh, yeah. Why don't you explain what Melarus is for people who may not understand? Melarus are special assessment taxes for uh, newly built areas. Um, so if you're building a new plan unit development in California, most likely you'll have to go under Melarus to fund things like shopping centers, schools, um, get your public uh, utilities uh, placed together. So, yeah. So it's a tax on a tax. Yeah. It's basically the tax for your infrastructure to get it up and running and funded. 
is what it is. So it'll be, it's everything that Joy mentioned. So it'll be all your utilities, but it could also be getting the police department up and running. It's your fire department, it's your school. But it doesn't go away. It's a, it's a it does. Now, it's it eventually. It's but... about 25 years. Usually. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought it was like a permanent thing. And yeah. uh, cause like, well, up and running, if it's already up and running, you don't need to tax people anymore. Cause I'm not a fan of taxes. I understand their needs, but you know, fiscally conservative. Um, <laughs> That being said, though, can we please circle back to the fact we need a freaking pipeline from the Midwest to the West Coast? <laughs> hey, let build that uh, pipeline. Get it, get it approved. I can see you being in charge of that. I, I, I don't know about that. I, I'm more of a <laughs> district level person. But uh, listen, uh, depending on how this this drought goes uh, with this uh, climate change. Yeah, we're going to need a whole lot, a whole lot more people, uh, such as yourself, the rock doctor, the geologist, that can actually show us how to pump water out of a rock if it comes down to it. So, and there are new water restrictions coming pretty soon, aren't there? Yeah, oh, I saw yeah. the news this morning, and they're going to be pretty some more strict watering ones. once a week. I think that was announced yesterday. So, any outdoor watering is now restricted to once a week. Um, I mean, we most of our plants are dead. I'll be honest. One, that's part me. I can't grow anything. I have, um, I do not have the agricultural skills to grow anything, but also we do conserve our water and we're very restrictive on our water and our plants died. And so now we have mostly um, small, very water tolerant plants like those butterfly bushes. Those things are great. They, they can survive anything. And we have a lot of um, gravel, pea rock, things like that. Just desert landscape. Because guess what, guys, we're in a desert. <laughs> so, Joey, going forward, what do you see as your main thing that you hope to accomplish? Really the water education piece um, for me personally. Um, making sure that, you know, people, I think people understand the importance of water, but letting them know or, or helping them to understand that when you turn your water faucet from left to right, it's not guaranteed, right? It's it, it's guaranteed in the sense that right now, you know, we have the luxury of having it, but it's not guaranteed, you know, for now or future generations. And things are moving pretty drastically in, in, in various arenas as it relates uh, to water, whether it's the pricing, the tier pricing, making sure that the, the piping infrastructure is safe, where we're going to get water from, perhaps if we end up getting it from Colorado, uh, like Wendy is is discussing, um, you know, all of these things are, need to be taken very seriously. I love that you're bringing up the education thing. So I remember, you know, growing up, it was like, ah, just brush your teeth, you have to turn the water off, you don't have to do anything. And now it's a matter of like, okay, we change the behavior. And it yeah. really is just those small little things. So it is about getting people to understand the tiniest little thing, but it's, but it's also, like you said, get your toilets checked, you know, it's, it, they all add up, but it really is an education for people. Right. To know. And but also knowing, know but also knowing how many gallons are wasted. Um, so anyone who knows me knows that I'm a fan of taking baths, not showers. I have to re-educate myself because taking a shower, how many gallons does that use? Um, four or five, 10, something like that. It's not a whole lot. Yeah. A bath is like 60. 40. I'm like, oh, so same with washing dishes in a, in a sink as a dishwasher. To a dishwasher. Yeah. Yeah. A dishwasher, I think uses two gallons or one gallon. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and I also learned steam showers use, if you take a 20 minute steam, it uses one or two gallons of water, which is very cool. So good. Yeah. And that would just be a luxury, but yeah. it's, it's educated. I'm constantly learning. I know you guys are, um, and if Joy, if you can get the education out there through your group and your networking, obviously it's needed. It, it yeah. is very needed. So we had a we had a we had an educational um, uh, lunchtime for Earth Day at one of the high schools in South LA, um, Fremont. Um, so that was a great uh, teaching experience. Uh, getting people out to our ARC facility um, to educate children on water usage, where their water comes from, uh, how their water is cleaned. So, yeah, it's, it's just been very encouraging to be a part of 
uh, being able to get the word out. And, you know, I'm three months in now, but I, I, I'm looking to churn these programs out. Uh, I've got a great, great group of people that I'm working with. It's unbelievable. Not only are they just the most brilliant people in the world, um, even from administrative staff to technical staff, they're just nice. Uh, on it and they really care about it. So it just makes it even more uh, simple for me to care about it as well uh, at such a high level. Yeah. That is very encouraging. I, I love what you're doing. I love the group you're with. Yeah. And you, I need do to too. Expand, you need to expand your district to be north of the 10, though. There, you know, my <laughs> well, there is a district for that. Um, oh, okay. But if okay. everyone could get, get involved in their uh, local water politics. Uh, find out who your water agency is um, in your area. And, you know, there's West Basin, there's Central Basin, um, and the meetings are public and people can um, log and listen. That's great. I did not know that. So I public say, comment. Yeah. I gotta say, I think the best advice that I got out of this whole, I mean, obviously this has been really cool, but I love the fact that you said, call your water and have them come evaluate your property. Yeah. Yeah. You could do that. I oh mean, yeah. Like and it's free of charge. Be. It's it's free of charge. At least in this area, it's free of charge. And yeah, it should be yeah. pretty much for um any area. But fair. yeah, take take the power back into your own hands. But people don't and see this is part of the education that you get to do is telling people that you can do these things. Right. Because most people have no freaking idea. No right. idea. I have no idea. No. Right. No, water's important. And um so we're running into our thirtieth minute. And, yeah, uh, I listen. To hours. be <laughs> to be continued as we go on in, you know, and and figure out what some of these water solutions are. So, yeah, yeah we have to start being, being grilled by my team here. So, love it. We didn't grill you. We're friendly. We're nice. It, yes, you are. <laughs> I'm going to turn on my sprinklers and hoses now. So, yeah. Uh, yeah oh, make sure you do that. I, I know where you live. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to come for you. Right. So, and on, on that, guys, thank you so much. Brilliant as always, Joy. You are a delight as usual. So, uh, thank you. And we will see everybody next time. So, turn off your water taps, conserve your water. Don't water at night or early in the morning, not midday. That's just the worst thing you can do. Just once or twice a week is enough. Yeah, once or twice a week. Just just be be aware. Be aware. So take care, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.